This evening's demo was all about turning cubes in different ways. Uh, because of a technical hitch, we lost the first few seconds of the recording, so this is one from home. It's a four inch Cedar of Lebanon cube, which is what I used on the night, mounted between centers across the points using a hollow uh, tailstock drive without a tip and just using the headstock, making sure that it's uh, nicely settled in and nicely gripped um, across uh, evenly across the corners. So the first project is going to be turning a candlestick where I'm going to be turning both sides of the cube away and the first uh, activity is to turn down a nub on the headstock side to create a tenon. Uh, this is all about good tool control making sure the bevel rubs neatly and doesn't catch because you're cutting a lot of air. At this stage I'm using a 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a swept back grind turning it around 12 1500 revs. Still got a distance to go. Use a B down I think probably just to try and trim that up so that I I've got quite a distance away from it at the moment, so I'm trying to rub the bevel as opposed to going in horizontal. I don't want to get a catch. Still got some nasty lumps in there. Now that's shifted very slightly. So we just uh, so the wood is so soft it will crush the fibres, but these tip the points at each side are going to be removed anyway. So it doesn't really matter too much. Just as soon as I can get a, a chucking method on it, then the safer it will be. Right, at least I've got a chucking method, so if it goes horribly wrong, I can re-chuck it. So, let's go to this side. Um, one side is going to be done in expansion mode, where the um, candle holder went into. And the other side is going to be the... Yeah. I can't remember how I did it. Never mind, we'll carry on going and work it out as we go along. If you're making a bowl, it's a lot easier because you can just do the chucking method on the left and then you can take that point out and go all the way up to the top point and then hollow out. You've got to look for the ghost. So when you're turning like this you look at the top of the wood not where the tool is. So you actually turn the air because I'm trying to keep these points. So I've got about three or four mil. It's not completely square this isn't. So this is an example of where one of those points is going to be a little lower than another. Turn it up a little bit. And you can hear when you're stopping hitting air because you, you, the bevel's running sweet on the wood and you actually, it goes a lot quieter. So that's still got, needs a bit more, a bit more digging out. Right, I'll now hopefully be able to put it onto the chuck so I can finish this off because it won't be exactly centred uh, 
to where it was. So it's best to finish it off on the chuck. Right, what I should have done is uh, reduce that nub down to a smaller diameter so that it didn't jam in the center, but I forgot. So I'm just going to cut it off. Solves the problem. This is a record power 35mm drill set. The um, outside for my little candle holder is an unknown amount because all the measurements have worn off this. About about 40 mil. Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. He got his own back though. So I've got a really knackered rescued from the National Trust scrap bin at uh, Hewenden, horrible 40 mil Forstner. And I don't know whether it'll actually even cut, but so before I can drill that, I've got to um, get rid of the nasty, make sure I know roughly where. I'm going to turn it back to. So that's where it's 40 mil, so I probably want the top to be about there. Maybe something like that. So there's enough meat left. Not even a bit further back than that because it's very weak, this wood. And remove some of the waste. Now, as I've got the center up, in order to make sure that I've finished this as well as I can, given the fact that it's clearly not as strongly chucked as I'd like, I've still got some detail marks in here, which I didn't quite finish off. So I'm going to go and use a carbide, which has got a negative rake, negative rake tip on it, courtesy of Alibaba. Uh, thanks, Mr. Williamson, for pointing out where you can get them from um, and these actually produce quite a nice finish with care so you can go down the gun barrel if you want on number two is it thank you still getting some out of uh, whackness that this is taking off. Now as you come back, you're cutting air. You've got to be careful here, try and get those points right. I may just go back down that with the, um, the gouge, but I've got the bulk of the, the mess out from in here. Um, just... Uh, down with a smaller one. Be very delicate with this very soft wood. The advantage of this is it does smell lovely. It's hot. Okay. You will find when you do these that sandpaper is your friend at the end of the day to actually uh, get the points. Uh, co eh? Yeah, I've yeah. got a couple of bricks I use at home that are quite good for that. Because um, it does these these types of bowls do require quite a lot of love after the event, quite a lot of sanding to get them uh, the way that you want them. sound right. 
Right. Yep. I, it literally went a quarter of a turn, so. Yeah. So. What are you saying? Ah! That's even cleverer. Is that big enough? No. I need to take a little bit more off the top face. Oh, it has. You can obviously do this with a spindle gouge, and I may almost certainly probably will have to adjust the diameter a little bit. Just if you've got the tools, you might as well use them. Just going to dress this. To match. If you're going to glue this in, you don't have to worry about the fact that the drill has left a dent in the bottom uh, because uh, who cares? So that fits. I just want to now put a little tiny indent for the outer rim. So that, that's okay, so that's ready there. Now, if we say that the that is sanded and finished, pretend. The key question is now whether I've got the hole at the right diameter. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, it's funny, that, isn't it? So, we've now got to do the base and the centre. I'm going to now do the centre, which is the trickiest bit. So it's going to be parting down the middle. What is it? So I'm going down the middle, removing the waste, making a V type cut. Can you see all right on the overhead or not? I think I may change to the half inch spindle gouge just because uh, there's been a little bit more. My favorite spindle gouge, this is, this is the Les Thorn, you wouldn't believe it, but it's the Les Thorn gouge, spindle gouge, and this has been made so that the sides have been ground back. So this is not a part of a hemisphere, hemi semicircle. It's a semicircle with flatter sides. So when you grind this on the pro edge, you get a perfect fingernail grind because somebody has actually thought about it. Good old Mr. Les Thorne. Closer. I don't want to get too close because it gets complicated if you do. So it's coming down to two or three mil here, getting quite thin and quite weak. Let's try and do a little. Again, looking at the ghost.
gone quiet because I'm watching what I'm doing. I'm going to do, I think, a swap to finish the outside in a second. So, in due course, the aim is for it to sit on the three points. Does not matter if the three points aren't exactly where they should be because it's not exactly a cube, but you do what you can. Right, and drop the handle so that I get a decent bevel rub. This is all going to be waste. Now some of them, if you want to, you can, this sort of pattern that you've got at the end, you can emulate that on the underside as long as the points on the bottom meet the ground. If it's a really nice hardwood, you've got a lot more opportunity to embellish it compared to this uh, very soft. There's nothing to say that you have to have it sitting on the points. You can actually create a little bowl and have it sit on the bowl. Get in there. Aim is to try and get the top. That's a good, good camera view. It's a good one, that Richard. Not got points, which is a bit, a bit of a shame, but that's the accuracy of cutting the cube, I think. Just a tiny bit more. Oh. <laughs> but these uh, these corners, I don't think I can turn them out. Um, so that would have to be done by some sanding on the sides with a power sander. Take half a millimetre off each side, and then get it to get it to where you want it to be. As I say, sanding can be your friend, or cut the wood a bit more accurately start with probably going to call that a day on the underside I've got a little pimple pulled out because of the wood being so soft do a back cut small ridge because I was coming back. The good thing with this Cedar 11 is, is that you can actually shape most of it with a, with a sandpaper. That'll do for the purposes of the day. I'm just going to go back now into the middle. It does sit on its points. 
but its points aren't very pointy. There you are, that's number one done. Here are a few photos of it after I've just sanded the edges to get the points uh, sorted out. It needs some more sanding in the corners before it's finally finished. And here's the practice piece I showed on the night, which was full of worms, so I sprayed it with the Marble Effect paints, uh, just for a bit of fun. So that's the same, that's been chucked in this direction, but I've turned the point out. Uh, but instead of just uh, doing the candle holder, I've hollowed it all out. Uh, and then I cheated on the bottom, I just uh, sanded that off. Uh, so that's the same principle, but it's just one-sided. And then that's a little cube of uh, Paduk. And I just did it on both sides just for fun. A little, little weight. And uh, that's another little one of them. I did this a few years ago, so I think there's lots of things to do with the form that aren't so good. And that one again, that's all out of one piece of ash. Um, same principle, uh, but this was all about parting this off early on so you could actually rescue it and make one piece out of it. And uh, with this one, the secret about the chucking method is to have a recess on the inside of the lid uh, so that you can then turn that and turn the finial out of one piece. Um, so a lot of these things, it's all about planning <laughs> or doing it by accident, where the chucking methods are going to be. With me, it's usually by accident the first time. Um, 